Very cool. So the plan today is to go over EFA and M plus. And then I was going to do uh, latent class analysis, just like a, a new type of flavor, new analysis. And then if there's any other analysis you guys want to do, we will do that. Okay. So first off, we're going to do EFA and M plus. So I already have this all prepped. Uh, you know, you put in the data file and then the, the variables as they are, all of the variables as they're listed in the data file, this data file in the same order. Then the way M plus works is then you have to tell it what data, what, what variables you're gonna use specifically for this study. Um, so what I have here is, Family support, I know that there are four subscales here, family support, family strain, intimate partner support, intimate partner strain. Uh, for me, I always code my variables as ice on the screen. Okay, putting that over there. Um, I always code my variable, my missing variable as negative ice. So the analysis, you don't actually need two of these, I just put them. Um, estimator is maximum likelihood in L. If I maybe had nominal variables or I knew my variables were highly skewed, I probably would put MLR, which is maximum likelihood. Um, so for the analysis for EFA, it's very different than um, The entire line is type equals EFA, one to four. So the one to four means I want you to extract one, one through four factors. So one to four factors. Um, so in one, two, three factors, I can change that later, but that's just usually where I start at. Um, the plot will give me a plot of the eigenvalue specifically, um, plot two. Um, in the output. Um, and so I was going to see how many factors there that, that pop here. So we'll kind of do this together. The hope is that there would be four factors right here, four subscale. But this is a, uh, a new sample population. Uh, yeah, yeah, new patient population. But anyway, it's a, that maybe haven't done it before. These are all um, African American. Experiencing pain, so it might they might look different than so, okay. Uh, so I'm gonna run. Okay. So we get the first thing the N plus output is um, just what we ran. Um, so that's good news. And then we get your covariance, your covariance matrix. Uh, request that. These are all of the descriptive statistics, skew discretesis, max minimum, percentiles, the beat, and all of, all of those things. Get it once. Um, and so here's the summary of the model information with degrees of freedom for each of the one factor, two factor. Um, and this is the model comparison of how it, how it each of them um, fit one factor versus two. So that a lot of the things that we do in uh, SPSS by that you can do by models, M plus will spit out for you. So now we're getting to the eigenvalue. So eigenvalues occur are kind of one of the ways you can determine how many factors um, are, are in, in this. Um, and usually when it, it dips below one is when you know it's one more before that, right? So it dips below one right at four. So according to the eigenvalues, if this is a 
factor structure. So it's again interesting difference what we have thought. But that being said, there's always a little bit of of art to this level of, of statistics. This 0.926 is so close to one. Um, have, you know, maybe we want to look visually at, at the chart and how it how it looks. So we go to the chart of what the plot of what it's and the other way to think of eigenvalues is the ones, yes, definitely, but also an elbow, right? So wherever the elbow is, that means it's it starts to become diminishing returns for every additional variable. Um, or factor, sorry, that you add to them. So when we look at the, the elbow of diminishing returns or the fact, I mean, the four kind of is more at what I would call an elbow than even though it's slightly at, at one uh, or just below one, when we look at the actual plot of diminishing returns, um, I, I think of there's an argument for a core factor structure as well. So knowing that there, there's not a consistent answer here, it's not clear that it's three or four, the next thing that I lean on when A is going to be what factor? Uh, what do they do? Do they look good or not? So let's go uh, to that. So you'll see a replication of each of the factors with um, with this. So first we're seeing factor one, we get all of the, the fit information with factor one. And it, because it's in plus, it runs it as if it's a uh, structural form. So it, I think with the exception of the like model, you always get structural equation model fit indices for each of them. Uh, you have the loadings, uh, estimated residual variance of all of the all of the information for each of your output. So I'm just gonna scroll down to that's to scroll down to three. So let's look at the factor loadings for uh, three. Okay. So the it's significant at the 0.5 level. Let's say that it, it loads appropriate. Um, so we see that uh, on the first um, factor, we see a whole category. Um, Factor structure, sorry. So we're gonna look at the factor structure here. And remember, look at um, the loadings of 0.4 or above is kind of where the cutoff is for loading with um, a specific factor. So these first three of family support load pretty well with that. Um, and kind of hang together pretty well, right? Like the 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 are pretty decent. So they're not loading at all with the other factors. Really low with the other two factors. Interestingly, we see this family strain variable number three is, is kind of loading with it, but in a negative direction. So there's something about the factor uh, the number three that loads with it, but in a, in a Direction obviously it's strength support. So that one actually kind of works well. Family support all loads together. So then factor two, um, if we look at it, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, those are all the family strain. They kind of hang together pretty well, but then we also start to see some of the partner strain kind of starting to load. Here at like a, above a point four, which I mean could make sense, right? You have all strain from all of your relationships loading, but these items, partner strain, are also loading negatively on this other um, other uh, factors. So if we pop over to the third factor, right? We 
we see that intimate partner support and strain are kind of collapsed onto this third factor together. And the strain, but the strain is loading negative. Right? But it, even though they all are quote decent fat loadings, it's weird that they're reversed. So we would have to recode it if we, if we decided to lump it together. And I mean, it's definitely not ideal. Like we have some, some fours, a six is the highest one here. And then we have a lot of cross loading here that a lot of us choose this extract factor structure. So if we went with this three factor structure, I know that there would be some work we would need to do to explain why there's some cross loading here. Um, making sure there is maybe rereading the items, making sure there is rationale theoretically to reverse code and lump them together with the support. Is the reverse of one of the string items considered support? Or is the reverse of the support, would that be considered strain? Um, and just so you guys know, the items for support and strain are for family and intimate partner are exactly the same question. So it's interesting that how they load in this, definitely family support and strain are two separate constructs, but there's a little bit of confusion partner how, how those two things um, uh, mesh together with uh, family, it seems a little bit more than strain and support. So that being said, I mean, we're starting to build some argument with a three-factor structure that pretty um, ideal. Um, so then let's go to the four-factor structure. All of the same information. Uh, Yeah, you could. That at the top, the, the uh, I swear comparisons um, are are where you get statisticals in the position. So they're all, I mean, they're all different from each other. So um, that, that's not wildly helpful. It would have been helpful if maybe the three and the four were not significant different. And you would know that they, they are just in the comparison. But we didn't have that helpful statistic. Okay. Oh, so we're looking at the factor structure. So right off the bat, uh, I am noticing it to be a bit weaker. These three are sticking together, really high scores. These four are sticking together, kind of some one, two, three, four. There's a little bit of cross loading here, but it's not very much at all. A little bit of cross loading here, but obviously this is 0.7 is much stronger than 0.49. So not ideal, but that that strain, family strain is 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 it's stronger on that that factor structure too. Um all of the intimate partner support loads together. Again, we see some cross-loading here on the on the four factor structure. Um, negative, it's it's not nearly as strong, obviously, as 0 0.86, 0 0.82 versus 0.45, right? So uh, we do have some cross-loading. They're really highly related. So and uh, and same with the strain. We have a little bit of cross-loading with this so this last intimate partner strain variable across two um, items, I mean, two other factors, but again, much lower 0 0.43, 0 0.40 versus 0.75. Um, we're built, they're, they're hanging together much better. So, you know, my decision would be to go with a factor structure based theoretically on what no, each of these items are have. The, the eigenvalue is statistical support from that eigenvalue. Um, I would say that it is a four structure four factor structure. Um, and there is some, some overlap. So loading on the variable I mean, the same progression model, we might have some 
the correlation issues, so I need to um, account for that correlation. Uh, model that regression model to correlate those with the correlation if it becomes an issue in the area, right? So we know they're loading on multiple factors, which means there could be an issue with multicollinearity, but we would move forward and make that, uh, but do all of those tests. But the, the, these are all like bits of information to pick up to like inform what the next steps are and like what to anticipate uh, and stuff. So very simple to confirm. Um, so what are you guys thinking? What questions do you have? Okay. Easy peasy. All right, so I'm just going to go to um, I think you guys are good at that. What, are, what, uh, have, what have you guys done with Lane All right, so, so latent class analysis is a way to do uh, clustering. Um, experience of how they, uh, it used to be that you would do all of these cluster analysis and like visually look at how the variables, different of the variables cluster together, and those are different clusters, and then that type as predictive power. And then late class analysis came along, which is basically like structural equation modeling, but rather than getting a continuous variable out of the latent variable. Um, so um, you can either put uh, binary or categorical variables into this. You have to note it as such. Technically, for continuous, it's called a latent profile analysis and not a latent class analysis. But it's it's latent profile is like a version of latent class, right? Specifically, continuous. But people usually just the family of the All right, let me do one little tiny thing. Um, I'll get my uh, data tracker. So all of the analyses I do, I make sure to have um, a doctor. Spill my coffee. Um, forget what I do because inevitably viewers going to come back, a major professor is going to come back, a co-worker is going to come back and ask you what you're doing. Okay. Um, so this is the, the entire work that we've been doing on the data set. With secondary data, we track the variable names that we're using across all of them and we're just very detailed in tracking what, what we do, how we code things, um, and, and our decision. Um, okay, so So we'll run the LCA. Again, tell it what the file name is, the data file name is, 
um, and you want it in the exact same folder that your input file is in. If you don't have it in the exact same file, you can put higher right to where to find it. Um, some people forget all of the names in this data set. There are many, many uh, variables in this data set. You have to put every single one of them, but I'm only using, I'm using the average score, basically what we just saw. Uh, I'm using family support, family strain, parent child support, parent child strain, intimate partner support. So there's six variables, and I'm asking it to please, um, I'm telling it I want it to find two classes. First, to get the baseline uh, that fits to fit. Um, and then type mixture. This is all I have to do to get one of the classes. So how you determine the latent, the number of categories is very is, is similar to EFA and eigenvalues. Uh, let me try and find my data file. So first, you're going to collect all the BIC and AIC scoring tickets for each of them. You're going to see there, there are some ratio tests that you uh, can look at. This uh, parametric bootstrap applied like your ratio uh, like with a ratio test, I never get to actually work for me, but I still always collect it. So these are the two that um, that I usually rely on. And then is it basically a measure of how well um, the, the number of classes, uh, uh, how well it actually captures and classifies the data. Think of it as like um, what you would do logistic regression when you see how well these items classify it as so AIC and BIC, how you use these is again look for the lowest is the best. And sometimes when uh start to go up is when you say oh the lowest one is uh, is the number of classes it should be as you can tell in this model, um, and, and most of my models, um, I, I never get ASC and BSC to start growing. Uh, so the other way you can get it is the high value when you start to get returns from the AIC. These two ratio tests, once it goes statistically not significant, it is the prior. Um, Class. So you see here, 0207, oh, that means it's the prior, it's the prior number. It's the, it's, they call it K minus one. So K being the number of groups, minus one, so one per um, group there. Okay, so the I, uh, because unlike EFA, I can't say do one through six for me, right? I have to run these in separate. Um, so I always create a chart to, because my mind does not hold. Uh, okay, so let's go back to M plus. Uh, um, Okay, so first we're going to run it with, oh, and I also have a plot. I asked for a plot of the means of each of, of the items. It'll become a little bit more apparent later on. Um, I also, once I determine the number of classes, I rerun it with a state data sets uh, statement so it can export the classes. So then I can use it as the class assignment for the Okay, so let's run it. So again, it tells you the input. The you know, distribution information. 
And this one does not give us because it's a categorical. Anyway, nevertheless, it doesn't give us the more traditional but statistics. Give us gives us the likelihood score. And so I log the information criteria, and clearly this is a different data set. Um, Oh, no, it is. I, for whatever reason, decided the BIT was first and the AIT was first. Uh, it made it very confusing. Okay, so uh, I transferred the BIT AIC. Uh, this is more important once we get to two, two or more classes because it tells you how many people are there. So that's, that's really helpful. And then uh, the probability rates, it doesn't give me entropy because it's only one, right? So that's, that's a good baseline um, that we can move from. So then you go back to the, to the input file, do two, and keep it going. All right, so let's see. And then uh, it, it just, the, the code gets longer and longer to. There it is. So the same information, and then we get down to the classes. Okay, so we see that um, the class counts and the proportion in class one. There's about 731 of our participants, which is about 71%. And then in class two, there are 293, which is about 29%. Um, okay, so we know who's in what. We can scroll down and see the entropy is 0.78. Uh, my, I think like ideal entropy is like 0.8. So we like basically think about 80% correct. Um, but you know, you shouldn't be to be the class. It's more of a okay, this is my class, how well then we can be with the brand. Um, so here are our means, our model results in Clayton class one. We see what the averages are, the estimates are more like the of each of them. I mean, like class two, see. Different, different, different. More the twos, so uh, late class one is bouncing around. Okay, who can hold that many numbers? In head? And so that's why I request the plot because then we can see what the differences are, are here, right? We see that class one, which is our bigger class, 70%. We have high support, low strain, high support, low strain, high support, low strain. And we see kind of class two, which is about the border. Is it's kind of like middle of the lower support. I mean, sorry, lower, yes, lower support, a bit higher strain um, for, uh, across these. Across these. Um, the last thing we want to look at is at the very, very bottom is those test statistics that I mentioned. So here we see the, the the, the two test statistics here, the we won low mental uh four different did the math of this, like people, they um, they did it separate then long. They were like, no, 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 we're gonna do the test value. Um so anyway, uh so you just report those and wait for those to go dots. Awesome. Okay. So, and we also saw that the AIC kind of went down quite a bit. It went down about the So then, let's go to the cluster. It's going to take forever to right? 
Okay, so for we're going to see same information. There's three classes here. Um, a little bit more cold, but that two what was it 280, 280, 80 something. With the, the the additional two classes doesn't pull really much out of this too. Which again is not going to be a decision, but it's interesting to compare the new classes, right? Uh, we don't really know what the ice. Uh, and then oh, you got the baby. I always do. It's just a little tiny. Um, I think that got better just by a little bit. Yeah, just by a little bit, but it got better. Okay. Um, and we can look at those, but then we're gonna look at um, these test statistics, and we see that it's not. So at, at 0 0.08 and the other one that I always feel that never does it. It's not specific. So this is suggesting like a two plus one. Okay. Uh, and then the drop in entropy, I mean the drop that increase in entropy. Okay. Um, and then the definitely the drop in uh, uh, AIC and BIC for that model. So, you know, we decided to go with this two class model. Usually you could stop there, but we, we did keep going um, and saw that a oh, three class model actually doesn't fit as well. And then it, it got, came around again to a five class. Five class model did fit quite, quite well. Um, but what we found was the five class model was really difficult to, unless it turns more into like a qualitative comparison, which are these classes are statistically it was challenging to like justify like the meaningful difference between different classes. Um, so, and also for parsimony, we decided to go with two because the first, the first one. But it is so interesting to see like the different, and we, and we decided that maybe we uh, are gonna go with like maybe a specific way of planning all of, all of these classes. Because you start to have like a class of 8.5%, which is like 85 people. So you also start to, while it's interesting and that could be a different, different type of uh, family configuration, family quality configuration, you start to run into an issue with like um, group sizes and like sample power. So, uh, uh, really, but you run complex models with 85 versus you know 450 people, those, those aren't going to be going to have to start to have to do the quality of start to get to like really tiny classes, even though it's interesting. And we, I, one of the colleagues was like, well, what about that class of people who have uh, shoes, what class of shoes? So just like the reverse class, I think it was the class of Yeah, red, 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 red. Yeah, so it was interesting that the intimate partner one had um, I think we were talking about Family model. This is for non people. Is this class one five percent? They had the lowest support, highest strength, lowest support, highest strength. Which qualitatively, that's a really important group. Well, I'm sure the amount of like chronic stress that you put into their body is really, really high and extreme. But ultimately, they probably are collapsed into this group, right? Um, it, it, this group seems to be an average of everyone who's not in this really big, uh, uh, oh, sorry, the, the, the brown group, right? This brown group, uh, which is about 50%, and like all the people that kind of have this similar flavor of high support, which brand high support, and, and 
and these people do seem to be relatively different, but 5% you can't really do much with them statistically. It's not interesting, but we, and they're probably very important people too. Um, but they can probably end up being collapsed into this smaller set. Here is our spectrum. So, but we ended up going with, with, with this group. So this type of methodology is so fascinating and you can include any type of um, variable that you want. I'm interested in classes and clusters of people and variables and how those different classes then are predictive of outcomes or linked to uh, well-being, call it like whatever, whatever you're interested in. Uh, you do need quite a large sample size for this. This is uh, over a thousand people, and we're still having really small, small groups and issues with like five plus. Do you typically use the script, or do you then run the model? Is yeah, that we can like do. It seems like you can do a similar thing, but keeping things continuous in the movie. The effects that we yeah we talk about the groups in that way. I actually run them as categorical variables, so then different. For this study, we we had a group of which type cluster have a higher um, development. Pain or persistence of, of pain over over time um, is how we are looking at, at these models. But I've also looked at the relationship clustering to anxiety outcomes of a life satisfaction. There's also a really uh, fun, and, and it's usually at one time, right? So there's a, also a really fun. Um, Type of analysis called second third link class analysis where you look at it in time and you basically and so do a latent class profile for each year and then you export those categorical journals to and you put those categorical classes into another class and then you can combine the probability at um, Projector, late, late class. Um, and that's 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 what fascinating. These trajectories and categories are predictive of different well-being or outcomes. Um, so there's so much, so much stuff that you can do. With this. You can also do um, latent uh, growth curve modeling. So it's latent. Extra modeling, but basically it's latent, latent or like or modeling, but then add a different project. This is especially if you're a disorder. I think it is an inheritance. Sample. And that is kind of going to shortcut. They that sometimes are hard to replicate across results. So one of if you have enough data, which I don't hear, what they recommend is to split it into two thirds and a third. So that the two thirds fit into the late class kind of at that moment, you see how a lot of things Well, any other questions? I think you want to do any other MLM questions, but maybe I can talk about What is the benefit to like this to the like class approach versus just keeping it for every unit of the department? Like, you know, right? 
I mean, it's really interesting because then you can clearly see that like there's people who have strain in this. So it's just different research questions, right? Like, uh, and we were doing that for two. Those are like a, uh, the continuous variables are going to be constant. But this is a different research question, right? Like, so one of the studies I did, let me see if I can find it, um, to kind of give you an idea of something other than the way. Um, you can find it. Um, so this is the second order link class that I did. And I did it with a low trajectory. So I did it with a bunch of um, So here's the, 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 the equation you have to use to like, combine the variables. Um, so I did binary uh, uh, working yes or no, pairing yes or no, relationship yes or no, dual yes or no, and uh, did binary for each age, I mean, did a late class for each age group and then combined them uh, and I ended up with three trajectories of like, throughout emerging adulthood, like global change. So you had a work in school to family formation, group to work in school, uh, family formation, what are those? Uh, parenting, oh, I guess parenting. Some family formation. Um, school to family formation. So you see school and then it drops and starting to go up. And I thought it was just so interesting that like relationship just um, some school. So we see a little bit of school here and then a much sharper tick up and uh, an earlier tick up in family. So I ended up getting these three trajectories, and then I was able to, depending on how they were linked to those trajectories, like exploited in this category. And I think I linked it to like, yeah, like, um, outcome, then different trajectories for men and women. And anyway, like see how depression and anxiety played a role, like how, how it was linked to public anxiety. Um, like that. So you can look at like binary stuff like that as well. So yeah, if you're interested in like within this, like, um, and with the word. Tell you guys about that methodology. I'm sorry, I'm But anyway, who else? Who else? No. Uh, evaluations will be coming out. So,
we were to do that as soon as I get to here, I won't do that. I already got it. So, um, but so Anything else? Uh, actually, I think we're just doing what you said the proposed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not having it. I feel like it's unfair to have to do it. And we have a module full classes. Yeah, we So, I mean, you guys are already done. But, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the document is very good the endpoint in this text. Yeah. Um, this course is definitely not an endpoint. Uh, you know, it would take really out there. It should because I'm on the intercollegiate part of it. It's submitted last year. Maybe it's just better than that. Well, I also might need to. So let me know who to email, um, and I can. I know I got my best results. People have to like retake a bunch of classes. Oh. It's just like this. I was in order to get that stats, I was taking statistics classes throughout all of these different My daughter was. Oh my gosh. Can you like explain that? I mean, that is definitely the wise thing to do. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. Oh, I thought we'd give it Two boys right now. Oh, what? Sorry. She has two boys right now. 